Jared Edelstein here, your celeb expert and your celeb savant. Celeb Savant is a weekly entertainment show. We have long-form career retrospective type interviews with celebrities, singers, actors, and industry experts. Snap is a German Euro dance group formed in 1989 by producers Michael Munzech and Luca Anziolotti. There have been a number of artists that have participated in the lineup, namely Theo Austin, Turbo B, Nicky Harris, and Penny Ford. The actors had a number of top 10 hits around the world, including The Power, Oops Up, Mary Had a Little Boy, Color of Love, Exterminate, and Rhythm is a Dancer. They have received a number of platinum and golden awards the world over. The act continues to perform to sold out shows throughout the world. Up next on Celeb Savant, we've got Penny Ford from Snap. Where do we find you in the world and how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Um, I am here in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I did have a bit of a flu, which I understand many people have had it. And um, it just comes from being in Dubai one day and being yeah. in the freezing cold the next day and not, you know, getting a lot of sleep because you're trying to finish out the season. And so I've been, I've been actually home for uh, a few days just in bed kind of drinking warm liquids and and uh, getting myself together <laughs> resting your body i think yeah definitely that where does the name snap come from how was that chosen um i i have heard stories because i didn't think of the name um but i think from the producers they were working with a particular uh program um like pro tools or something but it was back then yeah and uh there was something on there that they just went that's it snap you know okay lovely it wasn't anything deep or thought you know like there wasn't much thought put into it it was just let's dive into your journey at what age did you decide cool you want to be in the entertainment world and how did that journey progress to where we are today well, I was always musical. I come from a musical family, although I was raised with with my grandmother, who did her best to, you know, put me in everything, marching band, piano lessons, dance class, you know, drum and bugle corps, whatever she could get me in to, uh, you know, pique my natural interests. And uh, so I was always quite musically inclined and music uh, thought a creative thinker since I was, you know, like five years old, I can remember singing Sergio Mendez, Brazil 66 yeah. <laughs> at five. And, uh, but I think it was when I joined uh gospel church at 10 years old, I discovered that, you know, I had the ability to lead a choir the children's choir, of course, and, you know, that kind of piqued me, you know, wanting to sing. But then when I was about 14, a friend who's still a friend to this day um, introduced me to, like, this band, like these guys in this band, and there was this whole community of band members and musicians, and that's when I knew that's that's kind of, that was my tribe. Finding your tribe, what were the next steps on the journey? Well, I eventually, I think when I was 16, I went with a band to Japan. Yeah. And we did like a three-month sort of cover band thing. And on the way back, I just kind of hung around L.A. And, uh, you know, I started out by being a writer at Motown's uh, publishing company called Joe Bet. Yeah. And I was a writer and a session singer. And it kind of went, you know, it was it was a journey, you know. After I discovered that I probably wouldn't be signed by Motown, I went to another company called Total Experience, and that's where the Gap Band and Yarvon Peoples were. So um, I did my first album there, and it's just been a constant involvement in one music project or another, you know, singing 
front ground, background, solo, lead, you know, ensemble, studio session singer, replacement singer, you know, I've I've, I've done it all. <laughs> and then how did you uh, meet the guys from Snap and how did that journey go? Well, the long and short of it is that I was singing with Shaka Khan, okay. who's still a friend to this day. And um, they they called her to, you know, to see if she was interested in working on the project. And she pretty much said, no, I don't do rap. You know, okay. neither of us understanding uh, European electronic music because we're we're like jazzers. We're like real musicians or sort of music snobs, yeah, yeah. if you will. You know, our, our favorite people were Joni Mitchell and Steely Dan. So I didn't know anything about it either. But she, you know, like, of course, I, I get I probably needed the money around that time. So she sent me to do it. And um, I sang probably the worst things I've ever sang on music I didn't understand. And here we are today <laughs> <laughs> talking about Snap. Talking about you know, snap. I like I've written some prolific things with some very prolific writers, you know, I got to write with some of the guys from the group Chicago and, you know, I worked on projects with Al Jarreau and Earth, the guys from Earth, Wind & Fire, but people mainly wanted to hear me sing What's in the Bowl, Bitch, so <laughs> kind of go with that. And how much um, input did you have on the Snaps music? Well, it was literally being put into a, I mean, they didn't have they're not singers, so they yeah. didn't know what to tell me to sing. So it was literally, you know, it's been, I've always referenced back to gospel church. You know, I even do it in terms of my formula for on stage. Now, you know, when the music starts, you sing until people are whipped into a frenzy. <laughs> Grew up that way. So, you know, when the music starts, you, you sing something and that's literally what happened. I just sang whatever came to mind and thought I, I actually thought I'd never hear it again. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So were you, were you shocked that it was so successful? It was, it, it happened like such a huge bomb that I don't know if I had time to feel shock. I was more like, what do I do now? You know what I mean? And it was a bit confusing at the beginning because they had another girl, um, my my vocals on the the, the video. Okay, yes. I was I was off working with Soul to Soul at the time. Yeah. And um, you know, I was moving about. So actually what ended up happening is we were on the same label as Millie Vanilli. And when the Millie Vanilli fallout happened. They didn't want the same thing to happen to the momentum of Snap. You know, it was yes. going up, up, up. So they found me. Over the years, have you been collaborating with Snap and then uh, writing your own stuff and for other people? Am I correcting my understanding? Yeah, I I signed a solo deal. I, I left Snap quite early, actually, okay. um, and uh, moved back to America and I did a solo deal with uh, Columbia. But during that time, I would still fly over and bring people, such as like Thea Austin and people like that. And I had an opportunity to write with Snap because at the time, Sony and BMG weren't merged. So I couldn't be a Sony artist and sing on a BMG project. It just didn't work like that back then. So what do you enjoy about performing live? Oh, what do I enjoy about performing live? Um, I, I love the energy exchange between myself and the people. And um, it's a definite palpable energy um, that goes between us. And, um, you know, and the fact that I get to go around the world doing music that is so important and so special to so many people in so many different corners of the of the world that's that's uh pretty gratifying right there so i've got a point of discussion around this i'm normally right up in front dancing jamming i'll, I'll take my phone out to take one or two video clips one or two photos 
and then I put my phone away. I notice the people around me have their phones out for like 80% of the show. Do you find that that disconnects the energy you were referring to, or it's just where society is at the moment? No, I think it's the way society is at, at the moment. I mean, I'm not going to waste time trying to tell them to put their phones away. I mean, there are disadvantages because people are at different spaces in the in the arena or at the festival or what mm. have you. And what they're getting in their phone is not necessarily what's happening yeah. all around. But, I mean, what do you do? And, I mean, I think it's silly to do this but you know i'm what do i know i'm old <laughs> you know and um i just I, I i don't know what you do with i mean i've gone to concerts that i really loved and taken pictures and you know done a little bit of filming but it doesn't bother me because i'm actually in the zone once i'm on stage i'm in the zone so i don't let like, there's really nothing that can distract me. For the listeners, uh, Penny and Snap will be coming to South Africa in January 2024 for the retro, 100% retro uh, music festival with a bunch of other artists. So, Penny, what are you looking forward to about the festival? Well, I haven't been to uh, South Africa in such a long time. I think the last time I was there, Madiba was still alive. And okay. so and I was there with Shaka. So um, it's been quite some time. So I'm looking forward to it and, um, you know, uh, showing, you know, a couple people who have always wanted to go to South Africa, take them to the yeah, yeah. the motherland, so to speak. Back in the day, we had CDs, vinyls and cassettes. I love me a CD. For me, it's an a thank you to you guys for all the energy and you put into the projects. I like holding mm -hmm. something, the aesthetic, the CD booklets, the images. CDs, vinyls, and cassettes are making a massive comeback. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But we've also got uh, these digital platforms that people listen to music on. So what are your perceptions of each? Well, you know, like I can look at it from the viewpoint of a consumer, which I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. But if I look at it from the viewpoint of a, a writer and a singer, it's probably a good thing as long as everybody can straighten out how the money goes. Yeah. Because that's that's where people fall at odds, you know, when your work is being sold and you don't even know who to call to get your tiny portion of it. And I don't want to go off into that because, they, you know, the fans don't really, you know, we we sort of get paid to make them not see that part of it. Oh, really? But it okay. is a part of it. And I think yeah. that we, we're living in a more um, candid world yeah. now where you, you don't go to some sort of coach to tell you exactly what to say. I think people can feel when you're more authentic when you're talking yeah. as opposed to uh, something scripted and something that's just uh, the status quo. So I've never been a status quo type of girl. So yeah. we do, we are often ex expected to keep our opinions and feelings about things to ourselves. <laughs> and do you? Um, I, I make my best effort. Okay. I do. Okay. Lovely. Just because I like to live a peaceful life, you know, I don't really have time to go back and forth with people all the time because I mean, I feel like I feel and they feel like they feel. And so there shouldn't be any arguments. And, you know, I'm, I lean more towards the peaceful side of things. So Penny, I know if I had to ask you this question in two hours, two days, two weeks, I know your answer will be different every time because there are millions of them. I recognize that and understand that. But if you mm -hmm. had to push play to five songs by other artists, once we finish this conversation, what would those five songs be and by whom? Okay. Uh, one would be Please Pardon Me by Shaka Khan. One would be probably like something like Haitian Divorce by Steely Dan. One would be Follow the Light by a group, my favorite, one of my favorite groups called Dirty Loops. And uh, one would be, let's see, I got two more. Yeah. Um, 
One would be, I'm trying to figure out, a song called Freedom by one of my other favorite groups. I call them my babies, the Walls Group. Yes. And then kind of a contemporary gospel group. You familiar with the Walls group? Yes, yes, yes. I was supposed to interview them earlier on the year, but their schedule, there was a conflict. So it never happened, but it will be happening soon. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll call them and tell them to make sure it happens. I, I know them personally. I oh, love lovely. Them. Thank you. Thank you. And do you know who Dirty Loops is? I think I do. If I'm correct, I just need to make sure I'm on the same page as you, but I think I do, yes. Yeah, they're three Swedish guys. They're like musicians from out of this world. And uh they um they're they're really good. Look them up when, when we're done with this. It'll change your life. I will, thank you. Well they're managed by Quincy Jones now, of course. Yes. Because they did a version of Thriller. If you can imagine this, that was better than Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. If you can imagine that. And it brought Quincy out. Quincy was like, uh-uh, I got to have that. <laughs> you know, so. Okay, and I got one more. Yes. One more. Let's see. What would be? I, I would say, oh, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's Gloria Estefan. It's um, Unchained or... On something unbroken, but I mostly listen to you know gospel and jazz on my downtime. You know, I get into some hip hop sometimes. You know, every now and then I get a feeling for some electronic dance music. Yes. You know, and when I'm in that arena, like I travel a lot with some of the people that are on this concert series. I believe, like Hadaway. I travel a lot with Hadaway. His song's really cool and really banging. So what's that called? Let me see. Gloria Unwrapped. Oh, yes. I've got that album. I've got that CD. I love that song for yeah. some reason. It really beautiful. moves me. So, Penny, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. So as a final message, what would you like to say? I would like to say that people should really tap into the good side of themselves and not become so immersed in the chaos that's happening in the world right now. Yep. Um, and try to see the good sides of things and try to pull us all as a global community out of this weird space we're all in. 